So what we teach is this model called freedom at work. And what we have found is that in order to build a freedom-centered rather than fear-based culture, it takes these three big picture things. Number one, it starts with a freedom-centered mindset. And as we've worked with top leaders and top companies like Zappos and Groupon and Pandora and Hulu and WD-40 and all these fabulous brands all over the world, what we found is that their leaders have an entirely different mindset when they come to the table. They're bringing a freedom-centered rather than fear-based mindset. Now, if you bring a mindset of fear, what do you want to do? You want to control, right? So when you have top leaders who are in this fear-based mindset, which most of us are and we don't even realize it, they're going to go and create these command and control management structures. But when we have a different mindset, like what Henry does at Happy, you bring an entirely different way that you design and operate your company to work. The second part of the freedom at work model is leadership. Freedom-centered versus fear-based leadership. Because if you're leading a company this way, you have to lead it in an entirely different way. And there's, there's several attributes that we teach with freedom-centered leadership. And I'm not going to focus heavily on mindset and leadership today, but I will give you a tip. A tip on leadership that took us probably 15 years to figure out. And here's the tip. The tip is, in order to build these kinds of freedom center cultures that we've all been talking about today, the number one thing is that top leadership must have high self-worth. They must have high self-worth. I'm not saying self-confidence, okay? A person can have self-confidence but not have self-worth. Self-worth is being secure with who you are secure with who you are. And when we work with companies, I will sit point blank with the CEO and say, on a one to 10, where's your self-worth? Because if they're not telling me an eight or higher and aren't willing to work on it, we're not gonna be able to transform their culture. Because if you're not secure in who you are as the managing director or CEO, are you gonna go create an environment where everyone else can shine? Are you? Hell no, right? If you're not secure in who you are, you don't want everyone else around you to do great. Has anyone ever worked for a low self-worth leader? Yeah, you can raise your hands, it's okay. Participation is good, yeah. You can nod, I'm not gonna tell on you, right? We all have. If you've got a crappy boss, I'm telling you, they're low self-worth. That's just how it correlates, okay? So I just saved you a lot of money. Only hire high self-worth people, all right? That's what you wanna go for. And the last part is design. And this is where the 10 principles of democracy come in. And we're going to talk more about that in just a moment. But the problem is that most of the time, we're operating in fear at work. Now, we don't run around saying, oh, I've got fear most of the time. We say, I have stress. I have anxiety. I'm sick of all this you know, bureaucracy that we've got, command and control, analysis paralysis, perfectionism, bad communication, distrust. Anyone ever experienced any of these symptoms? Anyone ever work in a fear-based environment? You are now or have in the past, anyone? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So this is the problem. And at World Blue, we're really committed to solving the root problem because a lot of times when we're trying to build great cultures, we're just focusing on kind of the leaves of the tree and not getting at the root issue. And the root issue that stops world-class cultures from happening is fear. It's the number one thing. 